Thank you for joining us on our very first episode of nextbyteofblack.com to be a podcast about our travels. And it's appropriate that we start with what has become one of my favorite cities in Europe, Ghent. We visited Ghent about two weeks ago. Um, we had gone to Brussels for a week's visit and we decided to split our time between Brussels and Ghent. So we stayed the first three days at an Airbnb place in the city close to the central station and then we took um, the train into St. Peter's. Uh, the trip was only about 30 minutes and it cost uh, 20 euros per person. If you were coming back the next day within 24 hours, you got about a five euro discount each way. But since we were spending four days in Ghent, we weren't able to take advantage of that. And on our arrival to St. Peter's, we took the tram. You want to take the number one Flanders Expo tram, and that brings you right into the city, to the old city center. We were staying in Cormac Center. It's a little square that's right smack dab in the middle of the of the city, and it's just a wonderful place to to sit and watch the world go by. Anyway, the tram stop was only about 20, 200 meters away from the, the hotel. We stayed at the Ibis Hotel Cormac. It's called Ibis Saint Bath something. I can't pronounce the other name because it's Dutch. Anyway, actually I, I found out that the Ibis is the same company that owns the Motel 6 in America. I've never stayed at a Motel 6, um, but if it's anything like the Ibis, it's actually pretty nice. The cost was uh, 71 euros per night, so I felt that was a fair deal. Because once we were there, we didn't need to take any sort of uh, public transportation because everything was pretty much around you. Some of the highlights of Ghent, um, obviously, the, the Belfry is, is one of the most famous sites. It's a tower that used to be used for, you know, letting the people know that there was incoming bad stuff happening in the, in, in the old times. But now it's just a clock tower, and it's the highest one of three. There is a, the Belfry of Ghent is the tallest one, and there's also the St. Nicholas and the St. Babel's one. It's worth climbing up and checking out the views from the top, but we didn't do that. We just admired it from the bottom. <laughs> Another highlight of Ghent is St. Michael's Bridge, which is, um, it's just awesome. There's no way to describe it until you actually see it. If you've been to Bruges, you'll realize there, there are similarities between the two places. But Ghent, it's like you're, you're in the middle of a fairy tale. There's no other way to describe it. You're standing there watching the world go by and you feel at peace. And you look up and there's all these huge cathedrals and, you know, all this wonderful joy and, and tall buildings and they're just pretty and you take pictures and you realize your pictures just look fake but they're actually <laughs> you, there's no photoshop needed to, to actually appreciate the beauty of this place anyway so um, a lot of people in the afternoons will get something sit at the cafe get some crepes or waffles and just sit there and people watch by the river and uh, it's a great way to spend the day. Uh, like we said, the Cormac Square has a bunch of uh, cafes that you can just sit at, and we did that for quite a few for quite a few days. Ghent is known for beautiful architecture, beautiful medieval buildings, and. They just all around you. You see the curves of the streets and the color of the houses, and it just makes you happy to see it. And it's nice that it's not overrun by tourists yet, as much as Bruges is. So it's kind of it gives you a little more into the lives, the everyday lives of regular people. 
and you hear English and French and Dutch and it's it's so beautiful that a lot of people speak three languages. Um, that's something I've always admired. Speaking only two, so so I think it's it's pretty cool. So you can get along with everybody if you don't speak French or Dutch, as most people also speak English. It's a university town, so it's a youngish vibe. There are a lot of kids hanging around, and I think I smelled hot at least once, which, you know, I'm not going to be a prude or anything, but I guess that's part of the youth culture. One other thing that we also liked was uh, hanging around and uh, going to the Graffiti Alley, which is right in the center of town. It's a whole alley that's dedicated to, to street art, and it changes constantly as uh, people go there and do new things. Um, it's, it's not hard to find. We actually found it. We were looking for it. And then I, would, I just mentioned it to my husband. I'm like, I hope we get to see the graffiti alley. And then we walked a few steps and boom, there it was. So it's definitely a good thing to, to walk into that alley and see what kind of talent hangs around in, in Ghent. And uh, I think it's lovely that the town made a special place for people to express themselves. So the rest of the center is left untouched and just perfect. If you walk down it, it comes, it comes in one side and you go down it and go down to the, but it's, it's quite a distance. I would say it's at least um, three, 400 meters. So, you know, that's a lot of street art. We, we really enjoyed seeing that. Another thing to see in Ghent is the Gravenstein Castle. Unfortunately, we didn't go in, um, but I've heard that it's, it's a great touristic thing to do, and the dungeon is especially interesting with all its uh, torture devices. So I'm hoping the next time we visit Ghent, we get to go there. The St. Babel's Cathedral was being renovated when we went, so we weren't able to see it. We had a lovely view of the cellophane that was covering the building, though, from our hotel room, because we were right across the street from it. I've heard the altarpiece is a must-see, so I'm hoping that that is something else that we get to see when we go um, to visit Ghent again. Food in Ghent is absolutely awesome. Uh, three meals that we had there really, really stood out to me. And uh, the first one was a sushi place called Sushi Palace. It was very close to our hotel. It's right across from um, one of the cathedrals. And it is probably one of the best sushi I've had, one of the best sushi meals I've had in a, in a very, very long time. They are famous for their boat sushis like you know they, you get this assortment of sushi and it comes in a little wooden canoe and I wish with right would, would try that it had 52 pieces of like amazing stuff and it was uh, 50 euros if I remember correctly 50 euros for two people but we chose instead to kind of order willy-nilly we had the dragon roll I think we had two <laughs> two orders of the dragon roll because it was that good and uh, the food was absolutely fantastic. So if you find yourself in Ghent, I definitely recommend it. Another place we went to was, uh, it was, I think this is how you pronounce it, uh, Zin Zian. It's a Chinese restaurant, and it's right under the St. Michael's Bridge. So you see the cathedral on your left-hand side, and you go to the right, across the street, and you go down the steps, and there it is. You can sort of miss it but you should definitely try. They have the freshest food, and uh, the service was a little slow, but I realized it was because they were cooking everything from scratch. So by the time it gets to your table, it is just, oh, you're super hungry, and it's just really delicious, and the price was actually very fair. Um, it smells a little musty as you go in, because it is under, and it's right by the water. But 
you know, they have humidifiers and you sort of get used to the smell and it goes away when the humidifier is, but it hits you when you first walk in the door. So don't turn back. It's really worth going in and sitting down and eating the food. The third place that we went to that was really good was called Spirit Cafe, and I think it should be pretty easy to find. They have an all-you-can-eat spirit dinner, which we had, and it was really fantastic. The way they do it, coming from Texas, um, you see a lot of, you know, you obviously have a lot of ribs, and they're all slathered in sauce, and it's all wet, and I like it like that. But it was also nice to see how they have this. It's like a dry, rubbed um, rib, and they serve it with this, like, five... Yeah, was it five? Yeah, five homemade sauces, and they were absolutely delicious. I mean, really, we must have had like three, three servings each. It was that good, and the service was great. It was a, a slow night when we went, but the night before we passed by, and it was pretty crowded. I think it was a Saturday night, so we didn't attempt to go. We came back on the Sunday night, and it was a lot better. And they have a wide selection of uh, beers. You could also go to the Beer House, which is right um, on the St. Michael's uh, Canal side, I guess you would describe it as. They have a huge variety of Belgian beer, which, you know, everybody knows that Belgian beer is really the best. But you can have your feel and hang out and watch people, and it's a terrific, absolutely terrific way to spend the night. The night view of the river is just amazing. The day view is already great, but when you see the night view, you're just like, wow. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. It's just wow. Everything about Ghent is just wow. <laughs> I, we find ourselves saying, isn't this beautiful? Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? And, and <laughs> it, it got comical at some point because you're just thinking, how can a whole city be just this gorgeous? But it really is. Um, I can't wait to go back and visit Ghent, really. You know you really love a place when you're already plotting a return before you even finish your, your first trip. I realize now that four days was not enough. I would have liked to have spent at least two or three more days and see some of the sites that we didn't see, like the, the aforementioned Graveston Castle, as well as the Great Butcher's Hall. I hear they have hanging meat from the top, which I would have loved to see. Um, for vegans and vegetarians, Ghent is also a good place. On Thursdays, they try to promote a vegetarian day and get you to not eat any meat for the day. and. Uh, it seems to be a citywide uh, push to like love your body more. And there's a ton of uh, vegan restaurants there too. So you would absolutely have no, no problem getting there and enjoying yourself and not having to worry about finding something that you would like to eat. Money-wise for our trip, as I already said, we spent 71 euros a night for the hotel. Um, we, our meals were roughly 20 to 30 euros for lunch and about 15 to 20 euros for dinner each day. So a budget really came in at about 60, 50, 55 to 60 euros a day. Because for breakfast, we would just have a, a, a croissant and some orange juice, and he would have some coffee. So it's not too bad. When we went to Bruges for the day, the meals that I was seeing at the restaurants were a lot more expensive. So I think Ghent comes in at just a little bit under. But I'm not saying it's cheap or anything, so you should be prepared for that. And the trip from here, we paid 60 euros a ticket round trip on Ryanair. So that was a really good deal. So for us, you know, we, we moved to, to Europe so we would be able to travel and explore the, the continent more. And so far it's been good because the, the low fare airlines that are around here 
really make your journey a lot more affordable. So it's, it's not as uh, much of a ding on your wallet. If we were traveling from the U.S., I could see it being a huge problem. But from here, it's, you know, it was a two hour and a 30 minute trip and everything went great. So there's my little wrap up of Ghent. You can check out some of the images that go along with my narration at nextbiteoflife.com and just search for Ghent. I think the title is Why Ghent is My Favorite City in Belgium. Well, I hope you liked our very first episode of nextbiteoflife.com podcast and I definitely would love for you to join us again as uh, we do more posts about some of our other favorite places in Europe. Hopefully you won't get so tired of listening to my voice. I hope to have guests on as well so that <laughs> you can get other, other voices, not just my boring old voice. Anyway, thanks again for joining us and uh, we hope to talk to you again on the next episode of Next Bite of Life podcast. Have a good day.